All right, guys, it's been a while since I've done a video. Uh, I've been pretty busy with a lot of stuff, including trying to put my wife's Jeep back together. But uh, I'm back. We're going to do a little project today for a friend and neighbor who was doing a project for another neighbor that went really wrong. So let's show you what we're into here. Okay, so if you'll notice here, this is our lovely casting. This is for a Ford van. It's like, I guess it's kind of an excursion van or something of that nature. And this has studs in here that mount up to an oil filter adapter so the oil filter can be run remotely. And unfortunately, when he was tightening this down, one of the O-rings or something wasn't quite seated. And it snapped the casting off and this casting is Apparently, very difficult to get. Let's see if I can show you down in here a little bit better. So, this part in here is all broken. And uh, we're gonna attempt to tack weld this back together. So I've got this clamped against the table here as tightly as I can. And got it as flat as we can get it. This is not a gap here. This is actually the curve of the table, so. Anyway, um, so I've got my tungsten sticking out a little ways. We're gonna try and see if we can get in there. Uh, I wish I had a smaller gas cup, but I don't, so let's get after it and see what we can do. this would be difficult to get at. This is very awkward. Okay, well, we kind of got attacked. It does not want to weld very well. We'll try and extend our tungsten out a little bit. You know, we've got a big heat sink in this table, so that's obviously not going to help. And then I touched my, dip my tungsten in there because I can't get to it. I'm going to go over the top here and into the weld. So it's a little, a little awkward. Plus I got the light in the way in the camera and I can't rock my pedal on very easily. Okay, well, we got it to take. That's all I'm after right now. It doesn't have to be pretty. We'll go back and blend that, but you can see it's spitting at me. This uh, was cleaned, I believe. He said he cleaned it and put it in the oven to bake out some of the contaminants. So, you know, he beat it out really deep. So we actually have a crack in the middle of here to get full penetration on the inside. That is pretty critical that this thing gets full penetration so it's solid and strong. Um, the only problem is we got a hole going through here with a counter bore and that's going to present a, a different problem if the weld penetrates inside there, but uh, we don't have much choice. So let me see if we can get this wire out of the way and uh, I'd like to just move it down if I can and we'll try and get some more weld in here. 
Okay, this is gonna be even more awkward than the other side, so wish me luck. I really can't see what I'm doing too well. Okay, that is not going to work with the clamp in place. Okay, I can see a little better. I'm trying to curve this welding rod so I can get around this clamp. It's very awkward, and I'm trying to have to lean onto this uh, pedal too. Whoa, what the hell? That's great. Okay, apparently we're having issues here. Okay, I moved the ground, so let's see if that helps, and then uh, I reground my tungsten. I'm kind of having to get this welding rod in here right away. What's going on there? But my hood didn't tint. Okay, well, I forgot. I turned this off. I'm not used to this. I fixed my welder so that the foot switch controls the gas now. I need to take this off. But this is the only torch I have for the TIG, so let's try this again, shall we? Now that I've got a bunch of contamination in there. I can smell the oil. I could not get that to take. What I'd like to do is flip this over, but uh, I just wanted to get that tacked in place first. That was not uh, ideal, but what can we do? We knew it was contaminated. Just going for a tack weld here until we can kind of get this to stay in place. Now I'm gonna try and come back to this other side and hit it a little further down while we're still clamped to the table. This makes it difficult because I've got to have this clamped to a flat surface until it's stable enough that we can unclamp it and yet I've got to weld down right next to the table. So it's still sitting flat so that's good. I can't believe that it took. I couldn't get the weld to start. I had to really get some heat into it. All right, we're coming back over here. I'm going to try and hit it right in this area. This is a very awkward tack operation. Okay, well, we got it tacked. You can see that spitting and bubbling. That's to be expected with this. We knew it was contaminated. This actually runs oil and antifreeze on the other side, so yeah, it's gonna be contaminated. But uh, we're 
we're just gonna do the best we can, see if we can get this tack together, and hopefully I can turn it flat and I can run a bead, but we'll see. Uh, I don't know. It's very awkward to try and weld like that. I'm having to kind of drip in a little bit of filler and have it above where I'm welding so I can really get some heat in there and then have it drip in there and blend it real quick. So let's keep after it. I'll show you more when I've got this a little bit further along. All right, so this may look horrible right now. It's not too bad. I kind of expected this. Um, it actually took really well. I just ground this out a little bit. We had a little um, blowout here. This wasn't taking very well. But you know, that's to be expected when this is contaminated so much. And uh, grinding through this, there's not a lot of porosity. There's a couple little spots right here. That's more where uh, the filler didn't join. So I'm gonna run back over that and then I'll uh, V this out good. And I'll probably V this out a few times, just put some good material in and uh, V it out to kind of clean it. And uh, we'll just keep doing this over and over until we get this thing to hold some, uh, strong. And uh, we're still sitting flat. Even though I had the clamp off for a minute, I clamped it while it was cooling so that uh, it would cool the clamp on in the position it's gonna stay in. Now, if this isn't dead flat when we're done, that's not a big deal because we can clamp to this surface on the mill and then I can take a fly cutter across the top of this and just even that out a little bit. That's really no problem. We have plenty of places to clamp on here and uh, you know, I think that'll work out fine. The one downside of this whole setup is these clamps are absorbing a lot of heat. And there's really not a lot I can do about that. I was putting so much heat into this, I tripped the breaker, which I've never done with this welder. So I'm using an old Miller 330 ABP from 1978. It's a great welder. And uh, I've gone through it and reconditioned a bunch of stuff. Maybe one day I'm gonna restore it and repaint it. So you can see it over here. And she is a behemoth. She's about 800 pounds, um, Adam Booth uses the same one and uh, a few other people on YouTube use the same one but uh, they're a great welder. It's not an inverter welder, it's pure transformer, there's no electronics in it other than capacitors, things like that. So it'll outlast me and uh, it's more than capable of doing this job. So I've got the continuous cleaning on here to be scouring the surface and uh, I bumped up my start amperage just a little bit so that we get this a little bit hotter right off the back. So I'm having to really ramp it in. Now, like I say, this is a very difficult thing to weld in such a, a small area. So one of the things I'm doing is I'm sticking my tungsten out way farther than I probably should be. Um, but it should be fine as long as we've got gas, you know, flowing over it. And then I've sharpened my tungsten uh, way pointier than I normally would so that I can kind of direct that current a little bit better so it doesn't spread out so much because I've really got to have it down in this crack pretty tight. And uh, normally you'd have a more uh, blunted tip, you know, have a tip that would just kind of be like this. And I've got it more like this. And that was intentional. So I can't remember which tungsten I'm using. Uh, it's the blue tungsten. I can't remember if that's 2% or 5% but uh, it works well for this. It's more of a general use tungsten. So anyway, um, I'm gonna let this cool. I've gotta get up early in the morning. So I'm on duty at 6.30 a.m. and this is after hours. I already work today and uh, you know, I've got a 60 mile drive each direction, so I'm kind of worn out. I've got a big job coming in Monday. Um, you know, I'm gonna rebuild a, a, a air conditioning system on a 2008 Jeep Compass. Not my favorite thing to work on, but it's the same guy who owns that Dodge right there. So there's plenty to do. And I've still been working on the Jeep. I plan on doing a first start on that soon. I'll get, I'll uh, post a video of that as soon as I've got that uh, ready to go. Transmission's in, drive line's in, floor's almost done. So. Oh, and hey, shout out to Decent Garage. I bought this transfer case for my Eagle for it from him. And uh, he gave me a great price on it. This is a, uh, I believe, a Grand Wagoneer transfer case. It's a low range case, so it's got two wheel drive, uh, full time four wheel drive, and low range. And uh, it's also vacuum actuated like the Eagle, so I can switch it into four wheel drive on the dash still. So check it out. So that's going to be in an upcoming video as well. 
and uh, like I say, shout out to Decent Garage. Tim's a nice guy and uh, really helped me out with that. And uh, it was a really fun time going down there and talking to him and uh, getting to see what his YouTube channel's about. If you haven't checked out Decent Garage, check it out if you're into 12 valve Cummins trucks. My goodness, I drove one of those uh, first gens for 18 years and I always wanted to do a Cummins in it. And uh, he's got some beautiful trucks down there he's done some great work on. So go check it out. And uh, I don't think you'll regret it. I know I haven't. I'm really digging into his channel. So let's get this welded up and uh, I'm going to go and have dinner and get to bed. Okay, we've got it all welded up and uh, I shaped it back. I uh, welded this up and V'd it out a few times just to make sure we get all the material out of there that's, uh, that's contaminated. Remember I ruminated. Unfortunately that counterboard got a little messed up and uh, that was kind of expected but it actually I think is a good thing because it allowed us to get a little bit of weld around on the inside. I cannot get down clear in there. I wish I could but we V'd that out you could actually see daylight in there so it should have pretty good penetration although I can still see a crack in there. I don't know how that's going to work out but strength wise I think it's fine. It's just whether it's going to leak or not. So my plan to test that is to clamp this down to the table on a piece of rubber and then I've got an AC flush gun that I can stab in here and pressurize this to about 60 psi and then shoot it with soap, you know, soapy water and see if we get any bubbles. If we do, then we're going to have to be it out wherever those bubbles are and we're going to have to re-weld it. I kind of don't think we're going to see that because the crack was right through here around the bottom and then up, up around here. This is not a crack. This is just old metal. It's just a little dirty there. I'll probably sandblast this whole thing too. And uh, you know, now I've got to figure out how to uh, hold this down in the mill. I toyed around with the idea of putting this in a lathe, but uh, my leg can't, my lathe can't swing this. Yes, my leg can swing this. So I'm hoping that this bottom bore in here is just a stop because it kind of vanishes over here. And uh, I bumped it just a touch with the grinder, but I don't think that it was really, like right here, I don't think that was really very defined to begin with. And this is just, you know, this upper step here I think holds the O-ring. So if you look in this one, this upper step looks like where the O-ring sits. Uh, we need to fly cut this and I need to bore this with a boring head and get this reestablished. So, so that would I think we better go straight to the table and uh, you know I'll run it past my friend James and see if he's got any ideas. He was a machinist for AMC, knows his stuff, so maybe he'll have some ideas. I'll show him this. thing is even. Okay, so I've just decked this ever so slightly. That finish turned out beautiful. So you can see where the filler rod is. There's no secret about that. This is two different types of metal. One is cast aluminum and the other one is obviously filler rod. I do not feel any separation in there. 
So now the really tricky part is going to be to set this up to bore that counter bore. So let me set up that boring bar and then I think what we're going to do is just have to kind of uh, figure out our width maybe on the other hole and then just ease into it a few thousandths at a time. Well, I had this going great and then all of a sudden the milling machine grabbed and look what happened. It caught both of those counter boards. Okay, I got that board built back up. Boy, she's hot. So I don't dare touch it to move it around for you guys, but uh, yeah, that's built back up. I might need to blend the edge just a little bit more, but it built back up fine. I think what happened was uh, when I was lowering the spindle, I think it just kind of let go a little bit or something. So I think what we'll do this time is we'll just raise the knee instead and uh, we'll avoid that problem altogether. I've had that problem a couple of times before. I thought we had it under control. We did not. So we're going to have to uh, deal with that situation. So I had the spindle down and I was using the fine increment hand wheel. And you see how that just jumped a little bit right there? I don't know if you could see that. When I was going down, it just kind of, it's like it skipped. This is a really old machine. I mean, this is built in like 1953. My boring bar is not the best setup. I think I'm gonna get some new ones. But uh, I'm just gonna roll this spindle all the way up. Now we're gonna lock it so I can't do that. And then we'll raise the knee, because you can raise the knee, obviously, in the same amount of, uh, of fine increments. And so that should avoid a lot of problems. The other thing is, I think I need to go on a lower speed here, just in case. It didn't seem to like that, even though you should cut aluminum on high speed. That was too fast. Um, I actually don't know what my machine's set on right now, but it's probably the fastest speed. Yeah, it's not the fastest speed, but 1500. So this is what this is gonna mount up to. It's like a remote oil cooler. And so we've gotta have that pretty accurate. But the O-rings will give us a little bit of forgiveness. Now, to compensate for all the shenanigans, I made a tap template. If you ever watch Salvage Workshop, he does this a lot for gaskets. Well, I did the same thing for locating our part. So I've got the original part, or excuse me, the original hole, and these are a mirror image of each other, as you can probably tell. So I can just flip this, and then I can etch that with some layout die, and then I know exactly where I'm supposed to be. I don't know that using a uh, edge finder is going to help us because there's no true edge to go off of and uh, you know we really screwed that up but maybe um, I've got an edge finder that's really pointy so we'll have to see what we do okay guys well here we are and uh, two boring bars made up later we're uh, finally getting somewhere the other boring bar I had I braised on some carbide and everything and it just wasn't cutting it and uh, it was chattering everywhere and uh, I finally ended up sanding it out on a mandrel. I got this but this didn't quite fit. fits in here without the sandpaper but uh, I couldn't quite get it in there so I was going to sand it to size and then I ended up brazing up a new boring bar with some high speed steel. This is just a thing I turned on the lathe real quick and TIG brazed this on and uh, it's sharp you know it's really sharp but it wasn't really doing much better and uh, you know everything you read says turn the speed up turn the speed up it's aluminum but uh, after trying that and it shattered worse I turned our speed way down so I'm going to 120 rpms and see where the belts are on this old index mill so we're at 120 rpms and then I've got a splitter on this switch so I don't know if that's you know half of that speed so probably I mean it could be 60 rpms it's pretty slow but uh, it did a good job it started actually turning a chip now I know my brazing on here isn't like this is not exactly where I would like it to be it's kind of at a goofy angle but you get the idea it didn't make any difference so look inside here there's a little bit of swarf in here still but uh, it looks identical to the original and I already tested this line here this is what it bolts to and it, everything lines up so my locating was good and really your seal surface is right here with these gaskets 
and then it has to seal against that really teeny step in there. It's hard to see on this one. This one's got a little bit of layout die in there so you can kind of see it. But that's what uh, it goes up against. And uh, this is the gasket that's supposed to go in there. So the original, I had to do all this all basically by feel because it was really hard to get some measurements on here and this boring head is not cooperating and it wasn't feeding out the right amount when I was dialing it in. It's a lot of backlash. And so that's how the original fits. And then this one, this one is a little bit looser fit. I think these could probably use some new gaskets, but I think it'll work. So as I put that in there, if you look at that, that sits really good in there. Come on, camera focus. So I think this will work. Now, the next test is gonna be to mount that other piece up, wherever I put it, this piece. And I don't have the stud for this, but I think we can clamp it or something and then leak test it. Now let me show you what we're gonna do, leak test it. Okay, so this is an AC flush gun kit for flushing out refrigerant systems in cars. And this uh, air gun is really handy for stuff like this because it'll fit a large number of uh, holes and orifices and uh, crevices, you know. You always want rubber in your crevices. So I'm gonna put that down on there and then I'm going to put a piece of rubber or something underneath the bottom side. I will test the individual piece that I just machined first, and then we'll test the assembly because it's critical that uh, you know we get a seal. I'm going to call the neighbor and see if he can bring over those studs, and maybe we can put those in real quick. But that's the plan. I'll just hook this up and uh, kind of stick around there. So stand by. Okay, to make this a little more clear, I think we're just gonna, you know, stick that in there like that. And that is one, to test the weld, okay? So we've got a test in here where I welded this up, make sure that weld isn't leaking, that's critical. And then the second thing is we're gonna wanna pressurize that to make sure that these flanges seal. That looks pretty good to me. I would replace these seals, like I say, and uh, those are gonna have to be under a little bit of compression. And uh, I think this will work. Okay, well, so we're all th fixtured up here. Looks like uh, we're doing pretty good. And Jeff's gonna let me know if this leaks or not. But that'll be a wrap on this project. And hopefully it's a little stronger than it was. We suspect it was broken already. So probably didn't help when it got cockeyed on there and squished down on those O-rings, but uh, Thanks for watching guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.